Yo, what's up, guys? Welcome back for another video. Um, I had totally forgot about this channel right here, Rebound Rewind. They have a lot of good. Uh, it's almost like a uh, cartoon character uh, NBA players, like talking about uh, history and stats and stuff like that. Um, it's a pretty good channel, man. I guys to check it out. Make sure you guys do that and tell them that I sent you guys. Anyway, we'll get right to the video. Top ten NBA players with a perfect finals record um i know michael jordan is one uh maybe will chamberlain bill russell i know lebron james isn't no he can't be but anyway enough about that uh, let's get to the video Having a perfect record in the NBA Finals is no easy task, so in this video we're going to name the top 10 retired NBA players with a perfect oh, finals man. record. My main rule is that they have to win the finals of course, so no zero ring players, and I will factor how they played in the finals, plus they need at least two rings. Because I don't want a veteran player who got an easy ring at the end of their career to mess with this list. <laughs> Without further ado, Another let's one. rebound onto that list. In 10th place is Andrew Bynum. He's the youngest player in NBA history to join the league, and his career is kinda hard to judge. He had knee issues at age 25 and was out of the league Damn. by age 26, Damn. but from his prime days with the Lakers, there was potential for him to be the next great Lakers center, and for what it's worth, he did better than most Lakers centers as he is a two-time champion and a one-time All-Star who went two for two alongside Kobe Bryant in 2009 beating the Magic and in 2010 beating the Celtics. Now, the Celtics did beat the Lakers in 2008, and while technically Bynum was on the payroll for the Lakers during that time, he was injured and didn't play a single minute in the finals. So yeah. technically he did not play in that finals and has a perfect finals record. I won't count this against him because that series probably could have been different if they did have a healthy Andrew Bynum. Yeah. In ninth place, we have Bill Cartwright. Bill is a rookie yeah, all-star who put right. up over 21 points per game in his rookie season and went 3-for-3 three three in the NBA Finals, being that. a part of Jordan's first three-peat. He was the star- You mean to me Bill Cartwright averaged 20 points his rookie year? Did I hear that right? Did I hear that right? Hold on, hold on, Bill Cartwright. Bill is a rookie all-star who put up over 21 points per game in his rookie season and went 3-for-3 three three in the NBA the Finals, said. being a part of Jordan's first three-peat. He was the starting center for those Bulls teams, so he certainly had a primary factor for them being champions. I have him ranked ahead of Andrew since he won more Ooh. titles, played more seasons in the NBA, and don't overlook Bill's stats. He can score if need be. He understood his role in the triangle, which is why offensively his point average did dip with the Bulls, but it's not like he got worse at scoring, he just had less touches. In 8th place, we have Mark Aguirre, who is a two-time champ and a three-time All-Star. He won two rings playing with the Detroit Pistons, as the Pistons beat the Lakers, then the Blazers. Lucky for him, he was still playing in Dallas when the Lakers beat the Pistons in 1988. While in Detroit, he averaged 13 points per game, Damn. so he was still contributing quite a bit. And in his best scoring season, he put up 29.5 points per game in Dallas. In Damn. seventh place, we have George Mikan. George, George is a four-time All-Star, three-time scoring champion, six-time All-NBA player, and a five-time NBA champion going five for Damn. five Damn. playing for the Lakers. George is a great player. It's hard to rank him though, because he played most of his career before the shot clock era. And the game before that, compared to after the shot clock era, was completely different considering how games were Travel. finished. Players can't milk out the clock in one possession anymore like they could before the shot clock era, but regardless, he is a legend and may he rest in peace. In 6th place we have John Havlicek. John is tied with the most rings and a perfect finals record at 8 rings. The other players with this 8 ring tie include Casey Jones and Tom Sanders. All three are great players and Celtics legends, but the biggest difference is that Havlicek himself is a 13 time All-Star, 11 time All-NBA player, a 1974 Finals MVP, and an 8 time All-Defensive player. I would have- Damn, I keep forgetting about John Hebblesher. I need to do a video on him, on this highlight. I think I'll do that. Noted. Ranked him higher, but there's just so much competition moving forward with MVP caliber players. But John himself is a legend, and may he rest in peace. In fifth place is Dave Cowens. Dave went two for Dave. two in the NBA Finals, playing with the Celtics and beating the Bucks in 1974 and then the Suns in 1976. 
Dave won an MVP in 1973, scoring about 20 points per game and averaging over 15 rebounds per game, which is really good for someone who's only 6 foot 9. He's also an 8 time all-star, and I would rank him higher on this list, but there's just so much competition moving forward. In 4th place is Scottie Pippen. Scottie is the highest ranked non-MVP on this list, but he was certainly a valuable player as there is no Bulls dynasty without Scottie's talent both offensively and defensively. Scotty is a six-time champion who wins six for six alongside Michael Jordan. You probably know how that story goes. Yeah. In third place, we got Willis Reed. Reed is a two-time NBA champ who went two for two with the Knicks, beating the Lakers in 1970, and then the Lakers again in 1973. He's a seven-time All-Star, two-time Finals MVP, five-time All-NBA player, and a regular season MVP, which he won in the year 1970, averaging nearly 14 rebounds and 22 points. In second place, we have David Robinson. David the Robinson. Admiral won two rings, going two for two, playing for the Spurs, beating the Knicks in 1999, and then the Nets in 2003. David is a 10-time All-Star, a scoring champion, a block champion, a defensive player of the year, and an eight-time All-Defensive player. He won yeah, MVP in 1995, work. averaging nearly 28 points per game. And in first place, hopefully to no one's surprise, we've got the GOAT of the sport, of Michael course. Jordan, Michael who went Jordan. six for six in the NBA Finals. This one needs no explanation, and is probably the most talked about perfect finals record, it's an obvious choice. To recap, top 10 NBA players with a perfect well, finals record. 10th like place, that. Andrew Bynum. 9th place, Bill Cartwright. 8th place, Mark Aguirre. 7th place, George Mikan. 6th place, John Havlicek. 5th place, Dave Cowens. 4th place, Scotty Pippen. 3rd place, Willis Reed. 2nd place, David Robinson. 1st place, Michael Jordan. Let me know what you think of this list and what you want to see in the future. Don't forget to dunk on that like button and subscribe with notifications. Is it dunk on that like button? Oh... Yeah, I knew Michael Jordan was going to be number one, but I was curious on who was, like, uh, in between. I knew Scotty was going to be on there, too, because he played with Jordan, won six championships with him. I didn't think about Bill Cartwright. didn't think about Andrew Bynum. didn't think about Mark, Mark McGuire. I didn't think not about the rest of them, either. That's not John Havlicek. Uh, I didn't know he was that good. But I'm going to find some videos on him and do some reactions on that. Uh, but hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you hit the like, slam dunk the like button, and um, see you guys in this video. Peace.